Well, happy Sunday evening to you all. Um, so I've just done a little video on workbench heights and yeah, I, it's one of those funny old things really. I think the more since after coming back to kind of online woodworking after a, a considerable break, um, yeah, the whole the whole way the internet works these days, it's um, there does this seem this thing where it's like maybe I didn't notice it before, maybe it's always been there, but that always these these subjects that get recycled a lot by absolutely anybody and everybody, and it's fine. I, I get why I think, but. I just want I thought that book that I highlighted was just was really great in the way that it's like there's no sense of an individual having a perfect idea it focuses very much on you as an individual working out what's right for you based on what you do okay and most most things seem to get caught up in in all kinds of different things someone who wants to maybe be dogmatic about this height or this height and it is quite impossible you cannot give somebody a perfect height like i said in the video you can shoot for somewhere between 34 to 40 inches it's probably going to cover most people but you'll need to use your body to decide that um so yeah um i haven't had much chance to do a great deal of woodworking recently i managed to sell that record t5 um shooting plane which um was good pleased that one went and yeah, it was interesting. I posted on um, on Instagram with that one saying, um, very similar like I did in a short video here, which was, you know, do you even need a shooting board plane? And like anything, I think a lot of people sometimes, and I've been guilty of it too, you can, you see that kind of a post and, you know, if, if I'm suggesting, hey, you probably don't, and somebody has one and uses it and finds it effective, and like, no, you should be using one. How can you say to people that you shouldn't be? And to be fair, I think after we had a discussion afterwards um, in the comments, I think he just deleted his comment. There wasn't me being argumentative. I think it was just a mix up in translation. And I think with a shooting ball plane, there's no denying that if you become specialist in a certain area that requires repetitive shooting, then fine. And if you've got the money, because that's not faff about, um, if you want to buy the beautifully made Liam Nielsen number 51, if you're in the UK, that's about 850 quid. Now, fair dues, if you look after it, you'll probably sell it for exactly what it costs you. But a lot of people aren't going to be in a situation to use or spend out that much money, especially if it's just a bit of a weekend woodworking activity, you know, it's going to be for down the line and you'll know yourself. I don't think anybody can tell you when you're going to be right for a shooting ball plane. You're either going to have the cash and you just think, I like the look of that. I'll have one of them. Um, or you're going to think, God, do you know what? I'm just sick of using this other plane to do this task. Um, I'm just going to mix it up and I'm going to grab something else. But I, I would say that, you know, certainly if you're beginning and you're only limited to a couple of planes, say you've got a number four and a number five, or a number four and a number five and a half, they'll, the number five or the number five and a half will be your shooting ball plane for a long, 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 long time. And something you want to get your head around a bit with a shooting board is that it's not there to just plough off like relentless shavings. It's not what it's there for. It's fun to do those Hollywood videos. You know, I'm guilty of it. That's what I do the YouTube shorts for because they're entertainment. It's kind of nice to see those fine wafers falling off the end. But it's not making anything. It's faffing around. Um, it's If you're having to do lots of shooting, it's probably indicative that you, you're afraid to cut much closer with a saw, which is fine. Again, this is only for a lot of people a, a weekend activity. But the better you get, the more accurate your saw's going to be. And then it's going to be maybe just a couple of bits of cleaning up to get it exactly right. And if a standard bench plane needs much more than a couple of honings to deal with the shooting on most projects, then there's something more awry. And substituting out getting better at sawing by just investing in a new shooting board plane it's probably not that great of value. And for me, if 
for 825 quid. Um, it's not to say that the Lee Nielsen isn't brilliant because that, when you hear me talking about these things, it's never to be a snob because at the end of the day, when you work to a high standard and you produce a quality item with quality components, with good after sales support, it costs what it costs, all right? And that's a unique tool that they revived back from Stanley's line and, and more power to them. I, I'm glad they're here. But from my situation, I can buy a bandsaw for 100 quid. I'm sure at some point that bad boy's going to get some use. I can buy a lathe for 100 pounds. I can buy a five and a half for 30 to 40 quid. A number four for 20 quid. Uh, a vice for 40, 50. You see what I mean? It's, it's just about balance. So yeah record t5 gone and um happy to see it gone and i hope somebody enjoys it either as a collection piece or as a user there's nothing wrong with it but equally i didn't feel there was anything particularly good about it um what i'm working on at the moment as um you might know i took a there is a short there right there's this atkins saw that i've revived that just needs to sharpen and I've got a Woden um, saw sharpening vise and I don't like it because it's metal and it pinches the fore and aft part of the blade and it's a bit hollow in the middle and it vibrates. So I'm in the process of making a nice saw vise which clamps together and holds the saw and inevitably once you start actually making something when you're a normal human being and you've got other commitments it takes a bit of time so um yeah <laughs> we'll see what happens because for the past couple of weekends i've been doing um i'm going to adopt a phrase here yard work and i love that phrase um i'm lucky enough to have a little bit of space out around my house not much but a little bit and last weekend was pressure washing off pavers because it just needs doing and I'm not in the situation where I can pay somebody to do it. Don't get me wrong, if I could pay someone to do it, I probably would because I don't enjoy it that much. And I like the word yard work. It makes me feel like I'm doing something helpful. DIY sounds a bit like I might be having fun. Um, and I, I get the satisfaction of seeing all the pavers come up nice and clean. It's like, boom, yeah, that's good. That's good, I like that. Um, so you get that feeling of satisfaction. Um, but yeah, I'd rather be doing a lot of other things. And um, same this weekend, unfortunately. I've got um, more yard work. I've got to straighten up some um, some bits around the front of the property. Um, just like a graveled area, which had become a bit messed up. I've got to dig out a lot of the, the soil and move it. Sort out a wall and, and make it all good again. Again, I don't want to do that, but I'm not in a situation where I can pay people to do it. So, you know, you do what you do. And what I have been doing probably more is starting to get down and write a little bit more. I've started the a book and it, and it really kind of ties in with what I'm just talking about, which is I wonder realistically how many people who use the internet as a prism to enjoy woodworking how often do they actually make something substantial you know like how often are they knocking up like a a queen anne low boy or um big chests of drawers or um dinner table is a pretty good choice actually because you can make that pretty quickly and it doesn't have that many joints in it um or lots and lots of chairs you know I think your average home woodworker, if they're still certainly of working age, isn't going to have that much time. And I know, speaking to the odd retired person, they'll even say stuff like, well, I've got more on now than I ever have before. So in the, in the book that I'm putting together, which, listen, it'll be free. The PDF will be free. I'd love to challenge myself to publish it because, you know, why the hell not? I think it would focus on that. It's going to be, you know, build a basic bench, your basic joints, and projects that you can realistically make at home without losing the will to live. And it's really hard, that, although it sounds ridiculous, because you can easily get drawn in by people who say stuff like, oh, you know, I, I'm at the bench from this time in the morning till this time in the evening, and I work 
six days a week and I'm go, 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 go. And I think I got fooled a bit with that. And it's like, I always thought to myself, well, when do you do the laundry? Um, when do you cook meals? Um, when does a school run happen? When do you help with homework? Or um, when do you get groceries? <laughs> when do those things happen? And, you know, some people might be in that enviable situation where you can just do all that stuff or it just turns up. Or, you know, if you've got a car, it needs washing or taking to the garage or walking a dog. You know, see some family, see a friend. <laughs> Who knows what crazy things you might get up to. But if you've got normal responsibilities, having just some simple projects that you can get on with that you can think, well, do you know what? In about three or four weeks, I can probably have that knocked up. I think that's quite rewarding and that's quite a big confidence builder. Um, and I don't think there should be any shame in that at all. Um, I've On my website, I have created a little area called Portfolio and it's a bit of a joke. It's, an, it's not there to generate commissions. Um, I do this for a living on a professional basis and it doesn't look anything like my um, collection of or my menagerie of planes and chisels. It's very much about making stuff in a commercial environment. Um, but the portfolio is nice because it gives me a reminder of what I've achieved. And reflecting on some of those, I've got one in there called a low cabinet, which is just basically, I could have called it a TV stand. It's just a TV doesn't stand on it. TV's bolted to the wall. But that one took me the best part of a year. It wasn't a year in time, but once you take into account all the commitments that perhaps a lot of people have, realistically, it took me a year to do. I kept going at it and I'm, I look at it now and it's one of those pieces where you think that was a good year of my life spent because I like it. Every time I look at it, I love the time I spent on composing the grain, trying to get the grain to wrap around the piece nicely, getting the contrasting timber. There's still a couple of things that bug me, things that I need to probably adjust. But overall, I look at it and I'm satisfied. But I kind of think, well, it'd be nice to engineer a few projects because I think a lot of people, if you don't get a few results showing up in a reasonable amount of time, you can easily lose interest. So, yeah, that's the direction the book will head in. But don't, again, I've, I've got other life commitments and I'm giving it away for free. So, you know, it'll happen on the 12th of never probably, but we'll see what happens. And if you've got this far... Um, commend to you again you get another medal imaginary just for you um i had one of those situations completely off topic from um, woodworking i've talked to uh, talked before about the dump obviously the place where you take all your rubbish and i have one of these really amusing things that happened and i kept my mouth shut because at the moment i'm in a really good place mentally i've been really stressed out a few months ago but i'm a lot calmer these days um I was taking someone up to one of the skips and walked up the steps and chucked something in. And um, with the pandemic, I think there's been a lot of people moving, you know, from uh, previous places looking for maybe a quieter pace of life or they've come to retire early or whatever. So they'll come to a backwater like where I live. And <laughs> she said to me, um, I said, well, where I come from, people would normally get out and they would help you put the things into the skip. <laughs> I, just, I just thought to myself, oh my God. So now the, the poor guys running the waste transfer station have to be your butlers. Is that is that what you bought to the area? Um, it kind of reminded me of that Simpsons episode, if you're familiar with it, where Homer has like the all the waste guys and they do like, like that garbage man song. It's like, what, you want these people to carry it all out of your car while you just sit in there listening to the radio? It's like, join the rest of the world, everybody. Just get what you've got and chuck it in the blooming skip. So, um, yeah, it, um, it amused me. It was one of those things where I thought, well, there we go, spot the wealthy blowing. Um, but, yeah, I hope you've had a great week. And, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. And hopefully, a bit of luck, I might have a saw vice soon and a video about sharpening a, a back saw to a cross-cut profile.